Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and also welcome to those of you joining from my article over on Forbes as well. And today we are checking out the NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti or TI, however you want to say it. NVIDIA seems to be using both terms these days. And uh, we're going to be checking out how that compares to the RTX 3070, which we have here. And uh, also in AMD's equivalents, such as the RX 6800 and 6800 XT, plus a few others thrown into the graphs as well at various different resolutions, both with and without DLSS and ray tracing enabled. So lots and lots of benchmarks to go through later on in the video. For now though, don't forget to subscribe to Crazy Tech Lab and turn on those notifications so you are notified when I upload a new video. Got lots more cool content coming up in terms of water cooling and PC modding and small form factor stuff. So loads more cool, uh, cool content coming your way. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and also like this video as well if you found it informative. And as always, I love hearing your guys' comments in the comment section below about what you think of this card and uh, what card you have and whether you're considering an upgrade at the moment giving these these crazy times we live in with crazy graphics card prices as well. And uh, I should mention that straight up that it's difficult to come to, to any real conclusions at the moment given that the graphics card prices are just insane really you know that we're talking about three or four times in some cases where they should be really and nothing's really going to change with the rtx 3070 tie i believe so we're dealing with a microchip shortage as well as cryptocurrency mining so there's a whole bunch of things running against us as gamers at the moment so while i'll be kind of comparing this card against its predecessor and amd's cards basically what it comes down to is if you find a card that looks uh, that's in stock somewhere and anywhere near retail, that's probably the card to go for. Hopefully with the crypto limiter built into the RTX 3070 tie as well as all of Nvidia's new cards that are kind of being shipped at the moment with the new TI models such as the RTX 3080 tie that we that I reviewed recently um, in particular, that may mean that there are more cards out there for gamers, but it remains to be seen. Prices are still gonna be crazy for probably for the rest of 20, 2021. We just don't know yet. Anyway, Let's take a look at how this card compares to the RTX 3070. And if I, if I just put them side by side here, you will notice that there is about an extra inch of length uh, for the RTX 3070 Ti over the 3070. The 3070 Ti is a bigger, more powerful card. Uh, the TDP, I think, is around 290 watts versus 220 for the uh, 3070. And Another big change, apart from the fact that the power connector, as you can see there, is uh, vertical, it's horizontal on the side of the 3070. Probably doesn't make that much of a difference. What will make a difference, though, to the uh, cable tidying obsessed out there is that we now have to deal with one of these. The original RTX 3070 only had a single connector like that in the box, but we now have to deal with two 8-pin power connectors via the splitter cable, which is included in the box. A bit of a pain, but I love the Founders Edition cooler, so I'm not too fussed about that, really. I think I'm gonna be getting some braided ones at some point, so at least they look relatively okay. Um, it's just something we'll have to live with, but that does mean that we're looking at a little higher power consumption here for the RTX 3070 Ti. In my testing, as you'll see later, that only equated to around 40 or 50 watts, so it's likely you won't need to buy a new power supply for that. Uh, for that reason. So there is no, there's no reason to kind of, um, you know, go crazy or go out and buy a new power supply. If you were aiming for a 3070 and you're now aiming for a 3070 tie, that's just not the case. We're only dealing with about an extra 40 watts or something in games. Um, of course, you do have other options other than the Founders Edition card here. And uh, Palette has uh, sent me over the RTX 3070 Ti or Tie even I'm doing it now, uh, Gaming Pro, which looks like a uh, fantastic triple fan cooled solution here from uh, Palette. And uh, again, here you've got two side mounted uh, eight pin power connectors. So not that much different to the Founders Edition, uh, but potentially a more potent cooler. So we'll be looking at that at some point um, over the, uh, the, in the not too distant future, just seeing how that performs compared to the Founders Edition card. But thanks Palette for sending that over. Looks like a fantastic looking card with some RGB lighting in there as well. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all we need to say on the, the actual physical side of things other than the cooler, also slightly different 
you with the 3070 tie you've got the true flow through fan here with the fan on either side whereas with the 3070 you only have the uh, the two fans on one side and if i just flip that over you've got the uh, the flow through section there so kind of a slightly different cooling arrangement as you can see here they're two very very different looking cards in fact that the 3070 tire looks more like the 3080 than it does the 3070 so in terms of specifications then, uh, what we have is, well, we'll start off with the price. We're looking at a $100 difference between these two cards, and that's much more than we saw with the RTX 2070 Super versus the RTX 2070. The um, specifications, though, aren't that much different. We're looking at the same amount of memory, but the memory has seen a leap because it is now GDDR6X and not just GDDR6, so the memory is a lot faster. We are also seeing the increase in power consumption, which is fairly noticeable. Uh, as I said, in, in terms of TDP, the system power draw rose by 40 watts, um, which is not that significant. It's not huge, but it's certainly noticeable. But the real differences are, or not real differences, the, more, le the less significant differences, should I say, are the fact that you get slightly more tensor cores, slightly more cooler cores, that kind of thing, slightly higher boost frequency, um, but that's pretty much it. The main differences here are a slightly higher boost frequency, the higher power draw, and the move from GDDR6 to GDDR6X. And uh, that probably means that we're not going to see significantly higher gaming performance. I would probably argue that, you know, before we actually get into the numbers, that we're not going to be seeing something akin to the 2070 Super, but we'll have to wait and see, because that was like between 15 and, well, anything up to 20% difference um, what we saw between those two cards. So that's it for the intros. So uh, again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, stick around for the benchmarking and conclusions at the end. So let's take a quick look at some eye candy of the new 3070 tie and then move on to the benchmarks. Starting with Microsoft Flight Simulator then, and at 1080p, the RTX 3070 Ti tops the graph ahead of the RX 6800 XT and offering a decent advantage over the RTX 3070. So switching up to 1440p and the RTX 3070 Ti falls back a little bit and matches the RX 6800 but still offers a slight lead over the RTX 3070. At 4K now then, and the RTX 3070 Ti again falls short of the RX 6800 XT, is slightly faster than the RX 6800 and again noticeably quicker than the RTX 3070. Moving on to Metro Exodus now then, and I should mention that I've only tested at 1080p the mid-range cards from the RX 6800 XT down, just so you're aware of that for the rest of the benchmarks. Here the RTX 3070 Ti offered a slight gain over the RTX 3070, not particularly impressive here against that card, but it was still enough to beat the RX 6800, while the 6800 XT managed a similar average frame rate but noticeably higher minimum 99th percentile. Moving on to 1440p now, and also adding DLSS into the equation, the RTX 3070 Ti is faster than all the other AMD cards, including the RX 6900 XT, but only with DLSS enabled. However, it doesn't really offer that much of an advantage over the RTX 3070. This is a pretty tough game to run at 4K, and here with DLSS disabled, the RX 6800 XT was no real match for the RTX 3070 Ti, which offered a noticeably higher average frame rate, albeit similar 99th percentile minimum. The RTX 3070 Ti offering a slightly better advantage over the RTX 3070 here, but we're only talking about a few frames. 
So what happens if we enable DLSS then? And obviously significant advantages over AMD. We're looking at nearly double the frame rate for the RTX 3070 Ti compared to the RX 6900 XT. But obviously it depends whether you want to use DLSS or not. The RTX 3070 Ti doesn't really offer that much of an advantage here over the RTX 3070 though. Moving on to Wolfenstein Youngblood and sticking with the lower end cards for this uh, 1080p test. And we are looking at the RTX 3070 Ti offering a slight advantage over the RTX 3070, but nothing really to write home about. However, it does manage to match the RX 6800, uh, while the 6800 XT was way out in front here. Moving on to 1440p then, and uh, with ray tracing and DLSS continue to be disabled here, the RTX 3070 Ti again offers a reasonable advantage over the RTX 3070, but only manages to match the RX 6800, while the RX 6800 XT was way out in front again. At 4K now, but still with ray tracing and DLSS disabled, the RTX 3070 Ti has a slight edge over the RX 6800. Again though, the 6800 XT was way out in front. Compared to the RTX 3070 though, the benefits here were again fairly small, but noticeable with a minimum 99 percentile of 103 frames per second versus 97 for the RTX 3070. Finally, adding DLSS and ray tracing into the mix, and amazingly, the RTX 3070 Ti managed the same frame rates the RX 6800 XT did on the previous graph, but without ray tracing enabled. Obviously, here, ray tracing is enabled and the huge benefits clear to see from DLSS. It also came close, close to matching the RX 6900 XT as well from the previous graph. And also offering a huge leap over the RTX 3070 here too of over 20%. Moving on to Dirt 5 now then, and at 1080p with just the lower end cards in the mix here, the RTX 3070 Ti offers a decent gain over the RTX 3070, but didn't quite manage to match the, RT the RX 6800, which offered a higher average frame rate. Moving on to 1440p again with ray tracing enabled and the RTX 3070 Ti just about manages to match the RX 6800 and offers a decent gain over the RTX 3070. Finally then moving on to 4K in Dirt 5 with ray tracing enabled and the RTX 3070 Ti manages a reasonable amount extra performance over the RTX 3070 but nothing really to write home about. It is able to match the RX 6800 though, but the RX 6800 XT way out in front here with an additional 11 frames per second on the minimum 99th percentile. Our final game test then, and Watch Dogs Legion is a fairly tough customer, even at 1080p with ray tracing enabled at ultra settings. With DLSS disabled for now, the RTX 3070 Ti managed to top the graph here, so Nvidia with a clear lead when it comes to ray tracing in this game. Uh, also offering a reasonable amount of extra performance over the RTX 3070, but again nothing really to write home about. Moving up to 1440p then, again with ray tracing enabled but DLSS disabled for now, and the RTX 3070 Ti has a good lead over the RX 6800 XT, while offering a more significant lead in percentage terms at least over the RTX 3070. Our final game test then, and Watch Dogs Legion at 4K with ray tracing enabled and DLSS enabled this time. And Nvidia obviously enjoying even more of, of, of an advantage here. The RTX 3070 Ti outstripping everything that AMD has by quite some margin. Uh, and also offering a decent advantage over the RTX 3070 as well. However, I think it's something to do with a, a limited VRAM issue. The game seemed to just absolutely gobble it up according to the VRAM bar chart in the game and uh, pretty much maxing out with the RTX 3070 Ti. Potentially the extra VRAM uh, offering an advantage there for the RTX 3080 and above. The final graph then is power consumption and as expected the RTX 3070 Ti drew around 40 watts more than the RTX 3070 
and AMD enjoying quite a significant advantage in power efficiency here with even the RX 6900 XT not drawing any more power under load than the RTX 3070. So what do we make of the RTX 3070 Ti then? Well, I think just down to the fact that it's MSRP, at least, we're not going to see an MSR the MSRP price, but going with that MSRP price at the moment of $599 is just $100 more than the RTX 3070. That makes it a whole lot more palatable and perhaps more attractive than the RTX 3080 Ti versus the 3080, which was obviously significantly more expensive and uh, not that much faster in the overall scheme of things. We were only looking at like sort of 10, 15, 20% at most. Here, we're looking at actually less of a performance boost in terms of percentages. We're looking at around five to 10% performance boost. Uh, and for an extra $100 when you're looking at a 499 price um, or $499 price for the 3070, that's kind of where you'd expect it to fit in, I think, compared to looking at other graphics cards out there. So it's not an amazing card for, for the money um, compared to the RTX 3070. You certainly wouldn't want to consider the 3070 Ti uh, over, uh, as an upgrade for over the 3070, but it kind of slots in where it should do. For an extra $100, you're getting a card that's a much more solid for, uh, casual 4K gaming card. It offers between 5 and 10% higher frame rates in pretty much everything, both with and without DLSS enabled and with and without ray tracing enabled as well. So from that point of view, it's it kind of slots in where it needs to and it leapfrogs the RX 6800 in a number of titles as well and also matches the RX 6800 XT um, in a lot of situations, even without DLSS. So that's kind of a good thing from NVIDIA's point of view. Um, the downside is that we're not kind of looking at the same gains here that as we saw with the RTX uh, 2070 Super, which was a fantastic card when it was released all those years ago. And uh, I remember it very well. And I just, yeah, I just love that card because for a what we're now seeing as a mid-range price, it offered a huge advantage over the RTX uh, 30, uh, the RTX 2070, um, obviously. So, yeah, we're not looking at that same difference here, but we're still looking at a card that I think just about justifies its price. You may disagree with that. Maybe you want to see more of a dis uh, difference for that extra $100 outlay, but the fact remains that you are seeing um, up to 10% and a little more in, uh, in, a couple of places, uh, in a couple of places difference over the RTX 3070. So I like the, uh, the Founders Edition card as well. The cooler does a, uh, does a great job and... It is a bit larger, but hopefully that should result in the same or lower thermals, depending on which RTX 3070 you, you have and you're comparing against, or which RTX 3070 tie you're going for and comparing against. And uh, it'll be interesting to see as well how uh, third-party coolers from the likes of Palette deal with the 3070 tie and its slightly higher power, uh, slightly higher power consumption as well, because a lot of them, I assume, are going to be using very similar coolers to how what they used with the RTX 3070. So that's going to be an interesting investigation to do going forwards, and I'll be starting that with the RTX 3070 uh, tie from Palette here as well. So that's pretty much it for me today. Um, lots, lots to think about there, and of course, everything kind of boils down to how, how affordable things are in your area. If you can find a 3070 tie, anywhere near uh, its MSRP, obviously, obviously you should go for it. And obviously if, if, you're, if the 3070 is retailing for similar prices to the 3070 tie where, where you live, the 3070 tie is absolutely the better card to go for. So that's it from me today. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video as well. And I will catch you soon.